So Ola's decided she's going to make some more of those delicious palmines and wants to make some with the chicken that we just recently processed. What we've decided is we are going to use up the livers and the gizzards along with some of the thigh and breast meat that I ground. And we're going to grind all that together into one bit of chicken meat that we're going to stuff in those palmines. The gizzards are tough. I'm going to grind those through the medium plate and then I'll mix the gizzards and the meat and the liver all together. I'll probably just kind of chunk up the liver into diced sizes so that it can incorporate well enough. And then I'll put it all through the fine grinder to finish incorporation and get a nice finished grind on everything. And then we can use that to stuff the pelminis. While I was working on this chicken meat for the palminis, Ola decided that she wanted to make some of that Russian rye bread for some Reuben sliders to go along with the palminis. The smartest version of adding ice down the throat that I've seen is they'll add dry ice. Because there's body and texture to it that pushes the rest of the meat out but dry ice doesn't leave any room for moisture. We, I got all the ingredients out. The recipe either calls for molasses or dark corn syrup. I like to use the molasses. I think it gives me that darker contrast to the bread and it's really flavorful. The recipe also calls for caraway seed, but I also like the funnel seed, so I like both of them. So I put both of them in there. Okay, how much cocoa powder, Logan? Oops. Um, so cocoa powder is um, three tablespoons. How about brown sugar? Um, one tablespoon. Caraway seed and funnel. That sizzling sound in the background is just me cooking up a little bit of that ground meat. I just wanted to sample it a little bit and have an idea of the flavor profile. You want to sample this? Yeah. Tastes like beef. Mmm. Mmm. That is really good. A little onion? Yeah, that's really dang that's good. Palmini? Yeah, I could do that. Wait, there isn't any onion in that? Nope. Mm. What did you season it with? Salt. Salt. I gotta need all this because I don't think this hook did the job that I I liked I liked for it to do. All right, that needs to be washed for my next. That's that's. Now you need an oil bowl. I love seeing the the funnel seeds and the the everything else in there. It looks pretty good. Okay. Bam. And we'll put it by the fireplace and let that thing rise. Okay, so I have the rye bread rising right now. And there's a couple of things that we did that actually is pretty neat. So we butchered a bunch of roosters. We took some of the organ meat, such as the heart, the liver, and we blended it, meat grinded it with uh, some other other chicken. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Mark cooked it up and it tastes really good, but he's going to tell me what the organ meats are. Okay. okay, organ meat is... So we have one pound of ground chicken meat. Okay, one ground of chicken meat. What is the meat? Is it mostly thighs? Thighs and breasts. Meat. Thighs and breasts, okay. And that includes the skins and fat around them. Oh, perfect. So, And then one pound of chicken gizzards. Okay, gizzards. And then one pound of chicken liver. Chicken liver, okay. Because those are really tough meats, I don't know if anybody's like cooked organ meat before. Um, they're super flavorful, however, they're really tough. We wanted to grind them in and see what they would taste like together. Uh, he just barely tried a little sample of it, cooked it, put a little salt on it, and it tastes really good, like really rich, really good. Um, I got my ingredients. I got my sour cream. I have two eggs. 
and some buttermilk. And I'm gonna go, and it'll require seven cups of flour. I just pulled out store-bought eggs. The reason why the roosters had to go is because our ladies are a little stressed out, if you know what I mean. Hey, Logan, you want to read me the recipe or not so much? I think I can read the recipe. Oh, good. <laughs> He's been so grumpy. Okay, so we have two eggs. Is that right, Logan? Right. How much, how much buttermilk? Uh, two thirds cups of buttermilk. Two thirds cup of buttermilk. Okay, one third. There you go. And two thirds, yeah? Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and mix it all up and then I'm gonna start adding the flour. Okay, that looks pretty good. And Logan, how much flour will I need for this? Uh, seven cups. Seven cups and what? That's six tablespoons of unbleached flour. Unbleached flour? Yeah. When when it mixed, it started peeling off the bowl, and that's exactly where I kind of wanted it to be. And I'm going to add a little flour to just peel it off, but I want the dough to be a little sticky when I'm working it. Honey, will you see if I'm in frame, okay? Should be on the phone. That turned out beautiful. I rolled the pin over my mold so I could actually see where I need to put my meat. So I'm gonna use Just yelling at me. half a teaspoon and I'm gonna fill in the, the holes. This one, right? these right now I'm actually going to go ahead and ditch this I like this for little tiny little dumplings but I'm looking at sizing them up just a little bit and going through this motion a little bit quicker so I can get through the dough and the meat so I'm gonna go ahead and hand form them and I'll show you how I do that so I'm just going to roll this out as big as I can. I'm going to use my wide mouth and instead of a half a teaspoon, I'm going to use a full teaspoon of meat and then I'll roll them up and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, let's fill them with meat. I like them a little stretchy. Thanks, man. 
this phenomenon. These are really pretty. They look good, huh? Yeah. I thought so. I thought I was like, well, I might. I want to see how they cook up. So after you freeze, I want to see how they cook up. If they actually like stay together and. Well, that's a good excuse to sample. <laughs> <laughs> and eat some. <laughs> dumplings do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Over a hundred I'd say, but they turned out great. 